I'm Jane Oryx and I'm going to talk a little bit today about a kind of psychotherapy, a model that I call parts and memory therapy. Not too long ago the book I wrote about it uh, was called Parts Psychology. Well, it's still called Parts Psychology, but I've changed the name of the model now to Parts and Memory Therapy in order to make the title uh, be more reflective of the actual content of the therapy. There are three basic elements, just as the name suggests. Parts, memory, and therapy. And first I'm going to talk about parts. Parts, of course, are smaller things within larger things. And when it comes to the personality, then a part is a smaller personality within a larger personality. That's why parts are sometimes called subpersonalities. They're also called voices or ego states or sides and a few other things. I like the word parts though because it reflects our everyday usage uh, of the word in our everyday language as we describe what we're doing and what we're thinking. So for example, uh, someone might say, um, sometimes I just want to kick him out on the street because I can't stand the way he behaves. But then another part of me says, wait a minute, I cannot imagine life without him. Or imagine a day at work in which you're totally overwhelmed and you're thinking, ah yes, I want to tell my boss to take this job and shove it. But another part, of me says, well, wait a minute, I need this job. I have a family to support. So parts are a part of everyday language to reflect different ways of being ourselves. Usually we think of them as metaphors or just ways of talking. But I'm arguing, I'm asserting that it's more than that. Parts are real. Parts are things. Let me give you another couple of examples to show how clearly that is true. So for now, over here on my left, on your right side, imagine that you are a parent, um, a mom part or a dad part. I'm going to use the word mom part because it's just easier to use, stick to one gender. So imagine a mom part of you is over here and you're tending to sick kids. You've got uh, one kid who's running a fever, another kid who's crying, uh, maybe somebody else in the house is uh, demanding your attention too. And you are irritated, you're overwhelmed, you haven't even had your morning coffee yet, you haven't had enough sleep, you cannot imagine how you're going to get through the day. So that's one way of being you. If you don't remember that, then you can imagine how someone else might feel in that situation. That's the mom part. Let's leave her over there, the overwhelmed mom part. Come back. You're here in the center, and I'll call you and me, the ones who are interacting here, the conscious self. So over here now on your left, let's put a different part. Please think about, remember, or if you don't have an actual such experience, imagine it. But over here on your left, I want you to try to imagine your very most totally involved memory of being with your sweetheart. A moment of great romance, a moment of tremendous sexual excitement. Remember how you were just totally connected to your sweetheart. The feelings, the emotions, the love that you felt, along of course with the sexual arousal. So that's a different way of being you over there on your left. Now compare these two different ways. You're totally involved, romantic, or, or um, sexual part, and over here on your right, the mom part, who is totally overwhelmed with taking care of sick kids and 
and trying to get through the day. These two ways of being you cannot be easily brought together. Imagine what would happen if you brought the mom part, the harassed and overwhelmed mom part, into the romantic scene. I think that things would very quickly fall apart. Or if you tried to move your romantic and sexual part into the scene in which you are taking care of sick kids and trying to get through the day, I don't think you'd get a response. The sexual romantic part would be rejected. You can't be both of those at the same time. That's how differently they are. So these are examples of how real these parts are. They are so different though, they might even appear to be or feel like different yous. And yet they're not. They are housed within the total personality. And when appropriate, you are the mom part or the dad part. And when appropriate, you are the sexual or romantic part. Each of these parts of you have their own agendas. They have their own sub-minds. They have their own sets of memories. There are two sets of memories. Your two sets of memories there probably do not overlap. The sexual or romantic part probably doesn't even know this other part of you, the overwhelmed mom part. And the overwhelmed mom part probably doesn't even know the romantic and sexual part. That's uh, your first introduction to parts. I'll come back later in another video and we'll go deeply, more deeply, into parts and how we work them in parts in memory therapy.